Um, I believe it was a Friday. I was at home. And we all know Fridays. When Fridays come, hey, it's party time. We go get dressed, we're getting ready to go out, party, hang out with the friends. But that Friday just seemed a little different. That Friday was, was just something about that Friday. I just didn't feel like going out. I didn't want to go out. I felt that if I was going to go out that night, I was not going to come back home. That was very, very heavy in me. A fear came over me. A fear I never felt before. You know, there goes friends knocking in the door. Bum, 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 bum. Mario, come outside, let's go. Let's party. I, wouldn't, I couldn't answer the door. I couldn't speak. Something had my mouth shut. Something had me held down that there was no way I was going to answer that door. And the more they knocked in the door, the more heavier I felt I was not going to come home. I was just not going to come back home with that. And I started getting scared. So maybe half an hour, an hour later, finally my starter friends stopped. They finally got the hint, I'm not coming out, or I wasn't there. They didn't, couldn't understand either what was going on. But I stood home. I laid in my couch. That's the way I laid in my couch on my back. I fell asleep, I went to a deep sleep. When I fell asleep, I remember closing my eyes. When I remember it was about nine o'clock that night. I opened my eyes. As I fell asleep, I opened my eyes again. That quick, just as, it's almost like a blink. Close, open. And when I opened my eyes, what I noticed was that my face was stuck in the ceiling. My face was literally stuck up in the ceiling. So I'm trying to catch myself here, like questioning myself, what was going on here? And as I look sideways, I can see my body laying in the couch. So I'm questioning myself, how come I can see my body? So I guess everybody knows how a balloon is birthday balloons and whatnot, it has the healing in there and you grab it with the string and you let it go and it bounces up and down on the ceiling. Well, it was, my soul was almost that way. I pushed myself down, grab my hand on the wall and I push myself down and I'll come back up to the wall and bounce my face. I did that two times. The third time when I'm trying to push myself down, I can see my body again. And it was like, it was just like in a peaceful, restful manner. So I start spinning around the ceiling, slowly. Start going around in circles. And I'm going a little faster and faster. You know, there's nothing in the ceiling. So I'm trying to get a hold on to something, grab on to something. And I just can't get a hold of anything and I'm going faster and faster and faster and as the fastest I'm going now I'm starting to hear these wicked laughs like demons they're laughing I can hear them clearly going eee! just wicked as I'm going faster I don't know if you guys have ever seen movies about a time machine I just whoosh, when the time machine disappears and it comes back whoosh. well as I was going faster that's what I heard And I find myself in this big, big, dark place. Dark, dark. There was trees, dead trees. The ground, the sand was like gray, dirty gray. Whatever was behind me, I was able to see these things because in there, there was a time where there's, it's so pitch black, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's so dark in there, you can't see anything. But whatever was behind me, I couldn't look back. But I can see in front of me. Everything was dead, trees. And it, it was just dry. There was no love, there was nothing, just dead.
dead. And I'm moving forward slowly. And I remember, not remember, but what I seen in my spirit. When I was out of my body, there was five demons that ran around me. And they were covered in black, almost like witches and warlocks covered themselves. Some of them were different. Some of them have face of like rats, some look like bats. You guys see these movies, these Hollywood movies, that the demons, how demons, they describe demons. See, Hollywood is based on the Antichrist. Witches and warlocks work for Hollywood. So they see demons, that's why they come out with these movies, because that's exactly how they look. So they make them as, 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 as a mask and, and models and, and, and they make movies like that. That's exactly how demons look. But these things are more 10 times stronger, 10 times bigger. Some of them have yellow eyes, green eyes, red light, uh, eyes. Not beautiful little green, red light like Christmas lights. These eyes were evil, wicked. You can feel the hate, how they look at you. You can sense that hate. That hate is so overwhelming that not even a human being in this earth has that, much, that, that kind of hate. It would be overwhelming for us. It, it would automatically explode your heart with such an uh, ugly, overwhelming hate. As I'm going forward, something caught my attention. My arms were straight out. And another thing that caught my attention was that I wasn't walking, I was gliding. And as I'm gliding, I had these chains on me. Chain with the ball on the end. They were so heavy, I wanted to put my hands down, but I just couldn't. I was taking that pain. And I remember seeing these demons and I kept saying, where, where am I? Let me go. They wouldn't say nothing to me, but they'll look at me and they'll laugh. They were giggling. That's all they would do. And I can see them. They have real long, long fingernails, real powerful, sharp nails, like razors. But they wouldn't respond to me. They were just giggling at me, laughing at me. So as I'm moving forward, I start seeing this big, big black tunnel. This tunnel was huge, and I can hear the sound of this tunnel. And I'm starting to enter this tunnel, and my hands are so over heavy. I, I, I need to put them down, and I'm in pain already. I just can't, but I'm still gliding into this tunnel. As I'm beginning to go into the tunnel, halfway into this tunnel, this terrible smell starts to come out of this tunnel. A smell that I wanted to die. Um, this smell was, was just horrible, horrible. If this smell was on the earth, we would die because that's how terrible the smell is. There's no air in there. There's nothing. So I had to pass this smell and I see a tiny little light at the end of this tunnel. And I said to myself, oh, okay, well, as soon as I get to that end of that tunnel, that little light, I'm gonna be safe. But I wanted to die. I felt ugly, death. And the, and the word of God says, this is the second death. It's just the beginning of your second death. As I'm going into this tunnel, I finally, went to the end of the tunnel. I didn't see that little light no more. Everything was just, I didn't see the demons no more. So I'm just standing there, okay? And then suddenly these flames just rose from the ground up. Real hard. That's the sound that I heard. You know how we open our curtains in the morning. So that's the way the flames split. When the flames split, a voice told me, walk forward, go in there. 
so I walk forward. When I went forward, <clears throat> there was a lot of screams. There was a lot of fire. I seen a lot of people. There was a lot of people screaming. Before I go forward, I'm not saying this to scare you guys. I'm not here to scare anybody. I'm just telling you, this is the true what happens after death. I seen all this, I seen rivers of fire. People are burning. There's been people burning there for many, many, many years, hundreds of years. People are, are their flesh burns. They burn, they burn, they burn, and the flesh falls. And your bones get nice and toasty and black and gray. And when it's done, then the flame, the, your skin, your flesh starts growing back on you. And then the flames start again. And I also see maggots crawling through your flesh, through your, in your bones. And they're eating you, they're eating your flesh. It makes no difference. Just picture yourself now in the earth. If you have bugs or, fr or maggots eating your flesh, how would that feel? But you're in hell already. There's nothing you can do. You have to, that's the torture. That's, that's, the, that's your everlasting torture life in there. I seen teenagers for the disobedience of their parents. I seen pastors because it said in the word, for they have robbed me of my tithing. I seen Christians because they didn't want to get up and do anything for God. And then Christians doing things at home, thinking that nobody will see them. I keep repenting, repenting, but they just never got out of doing what they kept doing and playing, playing, playing with God. They were either warm or either cold, but they're lukewarm. They just kept playing and playing and playing. But the flames there rise higher on Christians. Demons torture you in different way, even sexually. They can tear your head. They can sexually attack you. They can cut you. They can stab you. They will tear your pieces and you're still alive. You can feel everything that's going on. I seen witches, I seen warlocks, because Satan told them that he was going to promise them their kingdom if they serve him, which it was a lie. All he wanted was your soul. One soul is a million soul to the Lord. That's how valuable your soul is. As I'm walking through these dirt road, there's fire and there's screaming, there's shouting and people saying that, let me out. Let me out. I, I want to do right. I want to do right this time. I promise to do right. Let me go out and tell the world and let them know that this is a real place. Hell is real. But it's too late because once we have our opportunity and our chances, God's so merciful, He's so lovable, He gives you chance after chance after chance. And if we don't take that chance, that's where we're going to go. There was also people in there because they had no love and no, uh, no forgiveness for their others. It says, pray for your enemies. It says in the word of God, if you have no love, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. If you have no forgiveness, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Because God is pure love. Every one of these people that were being tortured and burned, there's no sleep, there's no rest, there's no food, there's no water. You know how it feels sometimes we don't go without water for a while? Man, we need water. Even though we don't like water, but man, we need water. I want some water. Food, rest. You ever been, when night falls, you're tired, you need to sleep. There's no sleep there. And these demons go in there day and night and they torture you in every which way. There's never no rest for you. Burning, fire. I mean, that's the least of your problems if you're sleeping, not drinking, or it's the torture that you're going through with these demons. 
And as I begin to walk down this trail, there was rivers, the rivers of fire. And as I can see inside the rivers, I can see these little eyes looking up at me. And it almost appeared that as they were going up and down, it looked like they were chained up together and they were walking, going up and down as they wanted to get out but you could hear their screams, screams, and you can see them reaching out with their hands. You can see the skeleton. And then, God knows the thoughts before we think them. So these are the words that I would receive. Those were the lesbians. Those were the homosexuals. These are the gay men that were chained up together, walking in, the, in these rivers of fire. Some of them wanted out, but it was too late. And as we go, and as I'm going, I, I'm walking through these through this road, and I, all this fire, and all these all these rivers. And I start seeing a lot of crosses and fire all over the place. And you see demons poking their privates, their privates, with with these swords poking their privates all the way in and coming out through their chest in a different direction, but they start in through their privates. And the word it says that masturbation is a no-no. It's a sin. It says, cut up your hand and throw it into the fire. It is better than your hand to burn than your whole body. Those were the people that had that, that were changed up, that they were in that curse, that they could not get out of pornography, masturbation, sexual desires that DNA will bring to them. And let me tell you, it's something that, that, that demons will, will tell them, will speak in there. Demons call us, we're stupid humans. That's the way they talk. That's the way they think of us, that we're stupid because we're so dumb to listen to every little lie that the enemy says. And I've seen a lot of these Christians in there for that. They say, well, a lot of Christians say, hey, I heard the devil tell me this. I heard the devil. Well, why can't we hear God? But because the bondage that we're in, the sin that we're in, and also for not loving each other. Not loving each other because I went back to that. We will not enter the kingdom of heaven if there's no love and no repentance or forgiveness. There's Christians in there because they could not forgive. They just would not forgive. God says, if I have forgiven your sins and remember them no more, why can you forgive? But now it was too late. They wanted to forgive. They're screaming in there, I forgive you. I forgive you. Get me out of here. I want to be set free. I want to do what's right. I want to go speak the word. I want to go, I just want to live my life for you. But it says it's too late. It is too late. And I can continue to walk through this. I wanted to be out. I was so afraid already. I didn't want to see no more. I did not want to see no more. I just wanted to bow down in the corner there or wherever and drop. And I wanted to close my eyes and I didn't want to see nothing no more. But whatever it was, it controls you. I was controlled to see and to move forward. In our carnal minds, we think that, oh, well, I can fight them off. I can run from them. No. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. And you cannot fight these things. They're ten times bigger than you, ten times stronger than you. There's nowhere, no way you would ever get out of these things. You would always burn. Witches in cells. There's cells in there, just like in prison. And everybody that was in these cells are the ones that created more crime, more sin in their lives. I also seen um, warlocks and witches where they were biting their flesh. They were, they were trying to drink their blood because there's no water in there. They figured if I bite my flesh off too, I can drink blood. So that's what I found. But these are the words that came to me when I seen witches and warlocks biting their flesh and these are the words is because when they were on the earth they sacrificed 
humans. They sacrificed animals and they drank blood and they ate the flesh of the sacrifice they did. So that's why they were in there burning and torching and trying to eat their own flesh. As I continue to go forward, I pass that. And every cell that's in there, there's different witches and warlocks for the sin. And you can see this old little, this little old lady there. And she looked towards the door out of the, the cell. And her face was changing, different people. And that's what she did in the world. She would transform herself into different people. And she was using um, Satan's power to destroy Christians, to destroy the churches. But the cells are almost like, like up in the, in the earth, prisons. Where all, there's a lot of cells because you also commit a crime up there. There's no difference on there that you commit a crime. And demons go in the same way and they torture you and they burn and, and they do whatever they want with you. And there's no way out, no way out. And I kept going this, as I kept walking, I came to this room, this one big, ugly, dark, gray room. But you can hear, you can still hear all these screams, all these screams. And there was a coffin in the middle. There was a big coffin, a big black coffin. And there was demons dancing around this coffin. And there was a hole in the middle of the coffin, like a, in the center of the, almost towards the heart. And as they were dancing, they were kept singing, we worship you, Satan. We worship you, Satan. And I can hear almost rock and roll music, just as us that I used to listen to, Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and all this rock and roll music, because that's also satanic. Rock and roll was created by Satan. And I can hear this music, but instead the words were different. They were worshiping Satan. They were saying, Satan is our Lord, Satan is the Lord. And as they kept going around the circle in this box, they kept poking the hole, poking the hole, poking the hole, day and night. And I can hear somebody screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And there was a pastor in there. A pastor because he was robbing God, for they robbed me of my tithing. Even not just the pastors. But there's a lot of Christians that rob God of their tithing. They don't give God what needs to be given. God is not a waitress. He's a king. And we, and we love God. We give what belongs to God. But this pastor was there because he had a big house. He had big Rolex. He had cars. And because he was robbing God. So that was his eternal life there. Being tortured by these demons. As I keep going by... And the, and the crosses that I seen, there was a lot of people being tortured, not only in their private parts because of masturbation and pornography and their sexual desires. But there was also people on the crosses being tortured. And these were the Christians, what they call the hypocrites. And God doesn't like hypocrites. They were doing things out of not because of their heart. They were doing things to look good in front of people. But deep down in their hearts, they hated them. They hated each other. There's Christians that get up in the morning and say, God, please don't let this person be there today. Really? God's going to hear that prayer, right? God is love. And for us Christians, we need, remember, we're not perfect, but we have to do the right thing. We have to love. We have to have that, that love of God in our hearts in order to do, to move forward and to listen to what God wants us to do. Love is the key. Love is powerful. Love is what breaks the enemy chains. Even men and women in there because of their marriage, the lusting, the fornication, the adultery, the pornography, the sexual desires that they had, which is, is vanity, it's bondage with the enemy. God created our marriage to be clean and pure for Him. A lot of Christians that they were getting couples involved in their marriage and then repent. 
a lot of people in there that were screaming and shouting. They had it worse. I mean, they, they were really being tortured in a lot of ways because of the disgusting things they were doing in their bedroom sexually with animals and, and whatnot. And I just kept going and going. I finally seen this top hill that I'm coming up to this hill. After seeing all these crosses, and the thing what got me was the screams and the demons that were so humongous. And they see you, the way they want to terrorize you, the way they want to just destroy your life. And even I see parents that we need to discipline the kids to be the priest of your house, the woman praying of your house, and to lead our children to Christ and they didn't do their job because that was our job so it's basically you're telling your son and your daughter go to hell I'm going to heaven so where did you wind up going for not doing God's will so I'm climbing up this hill already I can't stand it I can't see no more I, I just I wanted water I wanted I just wanted some water because my mouth was so dry. And I can feel the heat. I can feel the fire. As I'm coming up to this big, big, big hill, I finally came to the end of this hill. And everything closed from behind. And I'm staying there, and, and I'm, I'm there standing already with this. I'm, I'm, my mind is, is trauma, traumatized already. I, I'm already, I don't know what's going to happen anymore. All I know is that I was glad not, that I was not seeing anything anymore. And then a big angel, seven foot angel, beautiful angel with big blonde hair. No wings, just a white garment. This angel had a big sword in his hand. And he called my name, he said, Mario. Mario, he had to call me two or three times because I was so afraid. I didn't even want to move one hand because I didn't know what was going to grab me. And I looked up to him. He said, Mario, do you know where you're at? And I looked at him and I said, no. He said, if today was your time, this would be your portion. This is where you would spend eternal life. This is hell. He said, this is hell. He said, who's your God? And I said, I don't know. And I remember these two people by the name of Ronnie and Mike. There was the two Christians that would come out of the bus and go and pick up the little kids and pick us up for church. When he came up to me with the Bible and said, look, Mario, Jesus loves you. This is what they would tell me. So a little window opened up and I seen both of them coming at me. Look, Mario, Jesus loves you. When they said Jesus, the window closed. And the angel spoke to me again and said, Who is your God? I said, Jesus. He said, Scream the name of your God. And I screamed it real loud. Jesus! And it echoed through the tunnels. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's when I came back into my body. And I opened my eyes and I couldn't breathe. I was catching my breath. <gasps> and I, I, I was so afraid. I didn't want to sit up. I didn't want to do anything because I didn't know if these things were going to get me. I was just afraid. The lights were right there. I could just turn the lights on and I couldn't move. I stood there. I sat up finally and I had my head down. I was bowed up. And the first that came to me was, Lord, forgive me. And I got on my knees and I remember that. And I said, and I picked up my hands and I said, Jesus, please forgive me of all of my sins. I repent. I repent for everything, God. I said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to this place. Please forgive me, he said. And then that night, I remember a little buzz, like a buzzing noise or from the bottom of my feet, inside my feet. All the way up to my head. Zoop! 
came out. And from that point on, 19 years from now, the Lord let, delivered me from drugs, from alcohol, from tobacco, from sin. We're not perfect. We fall short. But once we love God, we become to hate sin just as God hates sin. He loves you as the sin that he hates. Just have you ever seen your dog come back to his throw up? You ever seen a dog when he throws up and he licks his vomit? Doesn't that look gross? That's the way God sees our sin. The sin is what he hates. But from that point on, God delivered me. And that's when I started walking with the Lord. That's when I knew he, I had a call from him. 